Coming up, for those of you who haven't already started, it's time to get ready to go back to school. And one thing we know is kids have the best questions. Do we have to wear a mask in school and outside if we're vaccinated? This little penguin has a big decision to make. Then the cruise ship captain breaking barriers on the sea and racking up followers on TikTok. You're sitting in the chair. Who's driving? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> We'll learn the best way to make a friendship bracelet. Plus, what happens when our Olympic heroes come home? Today, as Krista Palmer Day. And my own return home from Tokyo, getting the best greeting from a fabulous friend. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you and great to be back in America. I just got home from covering the Olympics in Tokyo, more than 6,000 miles away. And boy, let me tell you, my dog Lucy is glad I'm back. I'll show you that in a few moments. And I'm a bit jet lagged also, 13 hour time difference. Anyway, on today's show, we've got a captain of the seas who you are going to want to meet and we'll see how towns across America celebrated the return of their Olympic stars. But first, we know many of you are already back at school and many more will be returning in the weeks ahead. As you probably know, this summer we're having another rise in cases of COVID. So it's understandable that you may have questions about what comes next. Joining us now is our friend, Dr. John Torres. And Dr. John, it's great to see you. We're going to get to questions from our viewers in just a minute. But first, let me ask you something I think a lot of parents and kids are wondering about right now. What is the latest sense of when children younger than 12 will be allowed to get the vaccine? And Lester, you're right. I'm getting a lot of questions from parents and kids about this. And as you mentioned, you know, kids above the age of 12 and above can now get a vaccine under the age of 12, they're looking into it and they're making really great strides and they're doing it very quickly. And what we think is because they're doing the testing right now, they're getting all the information they need and they're submitting that information to the government so they can authorize it. We think that'll happen by Thanksgiving timeframe, maybe a little earlier than that. So that's when you can look for it for kids five to 11, but for kids under five, it probably won't be till the beginning, maybe the early part of next year because they have to make extra sure that they're safe and effective, the vaccines in that age group before they let them have them. Yeah, and of course, we'll continue to cover it on this program. Let's get to our first question from a viewer. Here it is. Hi, my name is Erin. I'm six years old and I'm from Hawaii. And I have two questions for you. My first question is, do we have to wear a mask when our friend comes to our house if we're vaccinated? My second question is, do we have to wear a mask in and outside if we're vaccinated or not vaccinated. Bye. Those are great questions, and doctor, it really plays to this whole idea. We're all a little bit confused now what the mask rules are. And it can be very confusing, Lester, and it is a fantastic question. And it comes down to essentially what's happening in your area, what your state, what your school district, what your city decides. But most of them are going off the CDC guidelines. Those are the guidelines that the government gives out. And what they have said, if you're fully vaccinated and you bring another friend over that's fully vaccinated, then you don't need to wear masks. However, if you're vaccinated, but your friend's not vaccinated, and here's where it gets confusing, then they should probably be wearing a mask and you should probably wear one too, just to make sure everybody stays protected. But when you go back to school, that's a different story. And what they recommended now, whether you have a vaccine or not, that everybody wear, wears a mask. That students, teachers, staff, everyone wears a mask to keep everybody protected because not everybody's vaccinated at this point. It can be very confusing. If you're concerned, simply put a mask on. They're easy to do and they can certainly protect you. That's some really great advice. Our next question has to do with COVID and other types of sickness. My name is Akhil Nandakumar and I live in Naperville, Illinois. I have a question. What happens when the COVID-19 virus mixes with other viruses? Bye. I love Nightly News Kids Edition. Dr. John, that's a really interesting question. I have to tell you one I've thought about. What, what, what's your answer? You know, this is a great question. And you know, I love these science kind of questions. But essentially what you're talking about, and I'll use this pink ball to demonstrate coronavirus and this one to demonstrate the flu. And what does not happen is you don't get coronavirus mixing with a flu virus and then giving you 
what we can call co-flu or flocu virus. That doesn't happen. Instead, what happens is you'll get a pink coronavirus mixing with a blue coronavirus. Pretend like these are variants and producing a third variant, the green coronavirus, which might be more contagious or more deadly. This only happens when the virus gets inside our body. And that's why it's important to wear masks and be vaccinated so these viruses can't get in our body, can't mix and produce one that's even more dangerous. Again, great question, Lester. All right, Dr. John Torres, thank you so much. You bet. Now, kids, here's something different that happened this week. You may hear a lot about Democrats and Republicans and how often they disagree on almost everything. Well, this week, the United States Senate, which is one of the two chambers of Congress, passed a bill in what's called bipartisan fashion. 19 Republicans voted with the Democrats on a $1 trillion bill that will put money toward fixing our roads, our bridges, and access to the Internet. President Biden celebrated the vote, but next it has to get voted on in the House of Representatives before it can become law. That vote won't come until at least later this summer. Now, if you're like me, one of your favorite parts of the Olympic Games was the swimming competition from Katie Ledecky to Lydia Jacoby to Caleb Dressel. The pool was certainly one of the most exciting places to be at the Games. And maybe you missed the action, which is why we wanted to show you this little penguin that just can't seem to decide if it wants to get wet and go in the pool. The baby chick is what's called a Magellanic penguin. And this was the very first swim for this little one. Not quite Ledecky, Jacoby, or Dressel, but fun to watch all the same. Our thanks to the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago for that terrific video. Now from the pool to the high seas, my friend Kerry Sanders had the chance to go aboard one of the biggest ships there is and meet the captain in charge. Lester, what eats more than 18 million pounds of potatoes a year is as long as two and a half football fields times 62 and weighs as much as 20 million elephants. There's a visual cue here if you're paying attention. I'm on board a cruise ship, and on this ship, were you to see the captain and say, aye, aye, sir, you would be in trouble, because on this ship, the proper response is, yes, ma'am. At the helm, in charge of the celebrity cruise ship Edge, Captain Kate McHugh, the first American woman to ever captain a mega cruise ship. Okay, so here we are. You're sitting in the chair. Who's driving? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, I have true professionals. I have a team of 14 that look after the bridge while I'm not up here. So I don't have to stay up here 24 seven. Captain McHugh is responsible for every soul on the ship. With crew and passengers, that could be more than 4,000 lives in her hands. While it's serious business, her sense of humor is disarming. What's that beep? Do we need to worry? Coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Anybody want a cappuccino? No? When COVID shut down much of the world, cruise ships emptied. Captain McHugh sat in the waters off the Bahamas with a skeleton crew, only a hundred sailors to keep the edge ship shape. Keeping her company, her pet hairless cat. This is Bug Naked, Ladybug Naked. Can you say hi? Good job, oh, wow. buddy. Good job. Now this is your best friend at sea? This is my sidekick. This is the Admiral right here. Um, she's five years old and I've been traveling with her since she was three months old. She always comes on the ship with me. During the 318 days she sat at anchor off the Bahamas, Captain McHugh and her cat posted on TikTok. The level of spoiled. They've become TikTok famous, 2.3 million followers and counting. Social media reaching a wide audience, but most importantly to the captain, girls. I follow her on TikTok. She seems really friendly. She just dances and with her crew members and she has a little a hairless cat, super friendly lady. 11 year old Grace Mummert from Kansas City was on board Captain McHugh's ship as the industry resumed sailing recently. The passage from Fort Lauderdale to Mexico and back. It's really cool to see a female take charge, I think. Most movies and stuff, it shows that men are captains, so it's kind of cool. She's kind of like a cool role model. I met a little girl on board, and she said to me that she couldn't believe that there was a woman in charge as a captain and that you're a role model. But see, we have to change that perception because 
to hear that a child thought that, we've got some work to do. Well, you're doing it. Kate McHugh, the first American woman to captain a cruise ship, charting a course for others. Lester, on a vessel this big and you want to stop, you don't just hit the brakes like in a car because there are no brakes. You leave the driving, or in this case, the navigating, to our captain. Aye, aye, Lester. Thanks, Carrie. Now to our series, Camp at Home. Today is all about that really good friend, or maybe even a group of friends. One of the best ways to show your friends you care is to make them a special friendship bracelet. Our pal Pam Malter at Camp Canadensis has some great tips on how to make the bracelet particularly awesome. Hi, Lester. Today we're going to talk about friendship bracelets. It's a camp classic. Here at Camp Canadensis, we talk about making your camp wrist. So you make bracelets, your friends give you bracelets, and then over the course of the summer, your bracelet stack gets bigger and bigger. We say by the time it hits your elbow, it's time for camp to be over. There's so many different ways that you can make friendship bracelets. There's beads. I recommend pony beads, which are the bigger size beads for our younger friends. It's not a recommendation of mine to go with the tiny little seed beads unless you're much older and able to handle maybe doing even beading with a needle. Letter beads are a super fun way to spell out words that make you think of the person, maybe their name, maybe something, an activity you guys like to do together. When you're beading, I always recommend using elastic. Stretch magic or any type of elastic is the best way to make your friendship bracelets. That way, you don't have to measure your friend's wrist and you know that you have a good chance of having it fit. It's also really convenient for them to be able to take it on and off as they're going in and out of the pool. Some of the other friendship bracelets you make, you just tie a knot and you can't take them on and off. And if they fall off, you might lose it forever. The most classic way to make a friendship bracelet is to do it using string. This is called friendship bracelet string or embroidery floss. And there's so many different ways that you can make bracelets with this. The most classic is candy stripe, where you can YouTube it and see how you make the number four stitch over and over and over again until it creates a really cool stripe pattern with all the colors that you've chosen. However, I have a little trick I'm gonna share just with you guys about how to make a super cool looking friendship bracelet that only takes two minutes. So I've already got my string cut and I had my friend choose the colors based on what he wants to wear on his wrist. This is for my friend Ben and I'm gonna show you how simple it is to make this bracelet. You just take one side, you tuck it somewhere, and then you start to twist, 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 twist. You could also do this using a clipboard to hold the other side, or maybe even having a friend hold it as you continue to twist. When you think you've twisted enough, you haven't. Keep on twisting. You want to twist until it's pretty much curling up upon itself, and that's when you know it's ready for you to make the bracelet. You're gonna bring your two ends together and keep your finger in the middle. And when you drop this middle finger, watch what happens when I release. You get a super cool twisty friendship bracelet that only took about two minutes to make, but it looks pretty awesome. The last friendship bracelet material I recommend is lanyard. In some parts of the country, they call it GIMP, and it comes in so many fun, bright colors. Because it's kind of plastic, it holds up really well. So these are the types of friendship bracelets that are never going to fade and you can use and wear for many, many years. You can also make keychains and all sorts of awesome stuff out of lanyard. The most popular stitches are Cobra, King Cobra, Staircase, Box Stitch, and you can YouTube how to do all of those. But my favorite recommendation for a beginner is to learn how to do the zipper. It is a super cool but also fast looking way to make some awesome friendship bracelets. I hope we've inspired you to make some bracelets for the people that you love and care about, whether it's beaded, string, or using lanyard. There's no wrong way to let somebody know that you're a friend by making them a bracelet. Pam, that was really great. Thank you, and I hope you'll make one for me. Well, as I told you earlier, I just got back from the Olympics in Tokyo, but I'm certainly not the only one. Also back home now are so many of the Olympic athletes who help make these games special. Our Hallie Jackson now has the story of how these heroes are welcomed home. After an Olympics like no other, athletes coming home to the people who kept them going. 
For gymnast Suni Lee, a reunion on the Today Show before heading back to her hometown of St. Paul, Minnesota as an Olympic gold medalist. We love you, Suni! And as an inspiration. I'm just so proud of her that she made it to the Olympics and got a, a medal. I'm just so proud of her. Today, as Krista Palmer Day. In Reno, Krista Palmer Day, named in honor of the bronze diving medalist. You all are what brought me to this point. The homecomings, emotional like in Harriman City, Utah, where fans lined the streets for silver medal swimmer Ryan White. I appreciate you guys supporting me and watching me swim. <laughs> <laughs> and I just feel so honored and blessed to be able to represent such an amazing country and my family so well. Flags, balloons, and sirens at that parade. And at this one in Spring, Texas, signs Simone Biles has already motivated the next generation. Pro skateboarder Jake Alardi in Florida with the grandma who raised him. A lot of us wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for our family supporting us and helping us out along the way. Discus throw gold winner Valerie Allman knows what that's like, reuniting with her parents. They were there in spirit, but... Oh, gosh, to come home and have them here, that, that was so nice. For these athletes, the world's most powerful, it's where they find strength. Home, once again, reminding each Olympian how many people were always on their team. When you're, you're at the games and you're in the moment, you know, you're just taking it moment by moment. But I think this is one of the, the first times that it really hit me. Being able to celebrate it with the people that mean the most to me is, is so special. Allie, thanks very much for that. And I thought I would show all of you what it was like when I got home after being away for more than two weeks on assignment. <laughs> this is my dog, Lucy. And you can really see why dogs are called man's best friend. And Lucy, I missed you too. But I'm just not going to bark like that. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, Send a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, everybody. And remember, take care of yourself and each other.